horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Old Judge Carter's word was law to the people of the town of Gold Creek. He took his legal authority very seriously, but for a livelihood, he depended upon his general store, which in time of need served as the courtroom. The judge believed less in procedure than he did in getting to the point when some question came before him for settlement. One day, a curious crowd gathered in the barn-like general store to hear Judge Carter decide what to them was the most unusual case in the town's history. The judge, sitting behind his old battered desk at one end of the store, started things off without bothering about formalities. <coughs> All right now, everybody. Let's have some quiet in here so a boy can get a word in edgeways. Well, that's better. Now, as I see it, we got a peculiar sort of case here to decide. We all know that Zeke Peters and Ned Connors owned the gold claim together. We all know that each one of them willed his share to the other, so that if one of them died first, the other would own the whole mine. Is that right? Yes, sir. All right, then. About a week ago, them two old prospectors, Zeke and Ned, both got hurt bad trying to blast with dynamite when they didn't know nothing about how to use it. They both died. Now, before we go any farther, I want to have Bill Miller tell what happened the day they was found. Bill Miller, come up here and tell what you know about it. Well, it was this way, Judge. I was hitting the trail of town that day. I overtook Doc Jenkins' rig coming along the hill trail. Hi there, Doc. You seem to be in a hurry to get back to town. Oh, oh, oh boy. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, look, Bill. If you're heading for town, you can do me a favor. Well, sure. What do you want me to do, Doc? Get to the sheriff in the corner. Tell him Zeke Peters and Ned Connors are both dead. Ned and Zeke dead? Yep. I have a case back on the trail. And if you give them the news, it'll save me a trip. I'll take them the news, all right. But 
Well, tell me, what happened to Zeke and Ned? Well, I was driving along in my rig when I heard an explosion over in the direction of their shack at their claim. I, uh, I got over there in a hurry, found both of them hurt bad. They tried to use dynamite. They were still alive when I got there, but they both died soon after. There was nothing I could do. Well, golly, Moses, that's sure bad, ain't it? Here, I'll get right to town and spread the news, Doc. Thanks a lot, Bill. It'll save me a trip. Now I'll turn around and make that call I started on. Come on, boy. Get up there. Get up, fella. Get up there. So I come on into town and... Well, everybody here knows the rest. Well, now, quiet down. Quiet down, all of you. Stop that infernal racket so as I can get on with the case. Now... Tom Willis is here representing the widow Brown, who is Zeke Peters' closest kin. Slick Carver is here to represent Emily Corners, Ned's closest kin. Is that right? That's right, Judge. Zeke's heir, the widow Brown, is a claim to that mine. Your Honor, in behalf of my client, Miss Emily Connors, I propose to present a brief in this case which will show that... Now, Zeke... see here, Slick Carver. Just because you did a bit of your law reading in the city... You don't have to put on with big terms that'll confuse the folks here. <coughs> Miss Emily's putting in a claim for that mine, too. Now, as I see it, if Zeke died first, even if it was only a few minutes ahead of Ned, mind you, then Ned legally inherited that mine. Then, with him dying, it would legally go to his closest kin. This case, Miss Emily. If it was the other way around... Then the mine legally goes to the widow Brown. Yeah, but who knows which died first? How are you going to tell, Judge? We all agree to divide that. Well, Judge, well, that's Judge that's Carter, I got something to say. Yeah, quiet, everybody, and let Tom Willis have his say. If there wasn't any way to prove which died first, well, I reckon the widow Brown would agree to divide the mine with Miss Connors. But Doc Jenkins ought to be able to tell us which one did die first. He was there when they died. Oh, that's right. He told me so that day. Judge, my client, Miss Connors, would never agree to dividing the mine because we know it's rightfully hers. Uh, I, what makes you so sure? Oh, we should have had Doc Jenkins here to testify so that we could... Doc Jenkins I... went a long distance on a case, Judge. Oh. You all know Miss Connors as housekeeper for Doc Jenkins. Before he left last night, Doc gave Miss Connors this note, signed by him, saying Zeke Peters died first. Oh. Let me see that note. All right, Judge. Hmm. Well, this is in the dog's handwriting, all right. And if Zeke died first, then the mine went to Ned according to Zeke's will. That's right. And then Ned died. So it goes to his nearest of kin, Miss Emily Connors. Now, wait a minute, Judge. I object to accepting that notice final. We ought to hear Doc Jenkins' testimony from him in person. Well, that's right. Wait. Well, I guess you've got a good objection there, Willis. We'll put off this court till day after tomorrow. Get Doc Jenkins into court then. If he don't show up, we'll accept the notice proof. Now clear out everybody. I wasted enough time. Got to wait on some customers to make up for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A short time later, Tonto, Indian companion of the Lone Ranger rode into the camp which they shared together with Dan Reed, young nephew of the Lone Ranger. Oh, Scout, oh, fella, oh, oh, fella. Oh, oh. Well, Tonto, you're back early. Where's Dan? Well, Dan, him go to blacksmith shop. Victor have loose shoe. Him come to camp later. Well, there's lots of time before mm. dark sets in, so he'll be all right. What's the news in Gold Creek? Well, people talk plenty about who get gold mine. Gold mine? What gold mine? Well, me hear him say two old prospector who die leave gold mines. Some say it belonged to Widow Brown. Others say it belonged to lady with sour face <laughs> who live at doctor's house. <laughs> that must be Miss Emily Connors. She's not very well liked around town, I hear. It uh, might be a little confusing to you, Tonto. But actually, it's a question of which old prospector lived the longer. Dr. Jenkins can tell that. I understand he arrived on the scene before either of them actually died. Ah, uh, me hear men say that. His uh, testimony will decide which of the two women is entitled to the gold mine. Ah, uh, me hear Dr. Way, woman who keep house, have note. Note? Ah, uh, it say old Connor live longer. 
She want mine. Judge, him say wait two day for doctor. If him not come, she get mine. I see. The widow Brown needs it a great deal more, but the law has to take its course. Let's start preparing supper. As soon as Dan arrives, we'll eat. Almost an hour later, Dan Reed reined up at the camp. Oh, oh, Victor, oh, boy. Easy, fella. Did you get Victor's shoe fixed, Dan? Yes, sir. You stayed longer than we thought you would. Oh, I had to wait my turn at the blacksmith. I see. What did he charge you? Well, nothing at all. You see, I did something for him while I waited. <laughs> yes, I've been noticing your clothes. Must have been a dirty job from the looks of that reddish stuff on your clothes and boots. I tried to brush that off, but it's some sort of funny dirt. Sort of sticky-like. Let me see. Oh, a reddish clay. I've never seen anything like that around this territory. How did you get it on you? Miss Connors, you know Dr. Jenkins' housekeeper, hmm. left the doctor's rig to have a spoke fixed and to have it washed. I washed it while the blacksmith tightened Victor's shoe. But you told me you washed the doctor's rig for him yesterday. Isn't that right? Well, yes, sir. It was pretty dusty yesterday, and Dr. Jenkins asked me if I'd do him the favor of washing it. Hmm. He offered me money, but I didn't take it. <laughs> he must have made a long trip last night to get that red clay all over it. There wasn't any of it on the rig yesterday. Well, I guess now that Dr. Jenkins is back in town, the question of the gold mine will be settled. Holler was telling me about it. I heard about that, too. But you see, the doctor's still away. Still away? How do you know that? Well, after he finished with Victor, the blacksmith asked me to drive the rig to Dr. Jenkins' house. I tied Victor behind the rig and drove it over. Oh, hold that one. Hold, hold. Hold. Hold down. You can leave the rig there. I'll have someone attend to the horse. All right, ma'am. I guess the doctor had a long trip last night. The rig was mighty dirty. Dr. Jenkins hasn't used the rig since yesterday, young man. In fact, the doctor went away on a call some distance from here, and he left the rig and rode horseback. Oh, but he must have used this rig since yesterday. It was so dirty and... I know what I'm talking about, boy. Now, go along and just leave the rig where it's at. I got no time to argue with you. Golly, that's funny. <laughs> Easy, Victor. Steady, boy. Hey, go on, Victor. So I left Dr. Jenkins' rig standing in front of his house and came on out here. Maybe Miss Connors used the rig last night. Somebody did. I'm sure there's no red clay like you found on the rig anywhere near here, Dan. And uh, Miss Connor certainly wouldn't go driving in that rig at night. It would be too dangerous for her. Mm, that's right. If doctor not get back soon, me hear him say her get gold mine. I heard that too. They see a man named Slick Carver gave Judge Carter a note from Dr. Jenkins. And if the doctor isn't back day after tomorrow, she gets the gold mine. Mm. I know that Slick Carver, and he's well-named. You know, I'm beginning to think that he's... Otto, we're leaving at dawn to search for a place where there might be red clay. Me not savvy, Kimisari. Things don't quite tie in, Toto. Dan washed Dr. Jenkins' rig yesterday after the doctor came in from his rounds. That housekeeper says the rig hasn't been used. Yet Dan found it covered with red clay today. That's right. It sure was hard to wash off, too. Yes, I know. Well, why are we hunt for a place where there's red clay, Kimosabe? Because, Toto, I feel that if we find that place, we'll find the answer to a lot of things, including the whereabouts of Dr. Jenkins. Oh, but, but if Dr. Jenkins didn't go in that rig, well, then how do you... Then a lot depends upon Dr. Jenkins' absence. It's occurred to me that he didn't go away on a case at all. Kimasabi, then you think maybe... I think Dr. Jenkins is in danger, Toto. That's why we have to find out where there's red clay, such as that found on the doctor's rig. The 
curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. our story. The following morning at dawn, the Lone Ranger and Tonto left camp and started a methodical search for a location showing signs of the unusual red clay. The search was extended throughout the day without success. Finally, they returned to camp for the night. The following morning, early, Dan and Tonto went to town to find out if there were any further news. They reined up in front of the general store and dismounted. Oh, 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 Victor, oh, 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 I see the judge has a sign on the door saying there's a court session this afternoon. Ah, uh, this day, then tell who get gold mine. Come, we go down the street. There seems to be a lot of people around this morning. Oh, uh, them come for court, maybe. Yes, I hadn't thought of that. Look. Coming out of Mr. Carver's office. That's Miss Connors. Isn't that right? Uh, morning, Miss Connors. Good morning, young man. Has Dr. Jenkins come back yet? No, he has not. And I don't know when he will be back. Why do you ask? Oh, well, I, I was just wondering. Well, it seems to me that you ask a lot of questions for a boy. What the doctor does is his own business. Good morning to you. Hmm. Woman not like answer questions, then. I know. And she glared at me plenty hard, too. Look, there's a single prairie schooner coming to town. Oh. I'm gonna stop for supplies, maybe. Oh. Why you stand, watch wagon, Dan. Tunnel, I was thinking. The wagon's so awfully dirty, it's covered with reddish dirt, sort of. That right. Come, we go look close. Tonto, it's red clay. Just like what was on the doctor's rig. Uh, right. What are you staring at, kid? Oh, I, I, uh, I was noticing that funny-looking red dirt on your wagon wheels. Yeah? It, uh, looks like red clay. It is red clay. Because of that there stuff, we got mired and lost the rest of the wagon train last evening. Funny, I, I don't, uh... I don't remember ever seeing clay like that around. Uh, where did you get mired? Very far from here? Oh, about nine or ten miles east of here, where a creek runs through a little valley. Good place to stay away from, especially with a wagon. Which way is the cafe, kid? Well, back that way, sir. Oh, thanks. See you again, mate. Come down. We go get Lone Ranger. He can backtrack on that wagon and find the place where the red clay is, Tonto. Uh, Steady, boy. Hurry now. <laughs> Get him up, scout. Come on, Victor. prairie schooner came into town. It was covered with the same kind of red clay. Oh, ah, that right, Kimasabi. Which way did it come from, Toto? Well, man say him come from east. About nine, ten miles. Get mired in red clay. I see. Here, Silver. Dan, you stay here in camp till we come back. We might run into trouble. Yes, sir. Steady, boy. <laughs> There's some hard riding to do, Toto. Well, we hurry now. Yes. Come on, Silver. Come on, Scout.
After skirting the town, the Lone Ranger and Tonto picked up the trail of the heavy wagon and backtracked its trail eastward. They rode in silence for a long time. Then the Lone Ranger spoke. Look, Tonto, those ruts show the red clay. Coming to the place at last. Ah. Man tell Dan wagon come through small valley near Crick. We're riding into a small valley now, look. Ah, me see Crick ahead, Kimosabi. Yes. Keep your eyes open for any sign of a shack or cabin. Oh, me do it. Wagon tracks plain, plenty deep here. Yes. The doctor's rig was driven along here. Those wagon tracks would cover up the signs. That's right. Me think maybe... Wait, Kimosabi, wait. Oska, oh, oh, fella. Oh, oh, fella. Very big oh, fella. Tracks and narrow wheels go off trail to hill. Yes. That must be where the rig turned off. Well, we're getting someplace. We'll follow those tracks. Come on, Silver. Get them up, scout. Keeping on the alert, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode slowly along the trail left by the wheels of the doctor's rig. After a short distance, they came to a turn in the trail where it rounded the side of a small hill. Then Tonto pointed ahead. Look, Kimasabi. Yes? There's a small shack and clump of trees over there. That's what we're looking for, Tonto. We'll have to approach cautiously. I'm telling what'll... Bullet come from behind. Someone trailed us from town. Tonto, they shoot again right on. No matter what you might think has happened, don't hesitate. Uh, but what you do, Kimasabi? Oh, oh, get him up, scout. Get him up. was right. Last Cambry was out snooping. He won't snoop any longer. Yeah, I can use that horse. Better see if that Ambry's really done for. Yeah, look at them guns. Hope you'd come close enough. Hey, I thought you, you were thought wrong. <laughs> well, this time I'll make sure you get a bullet. No, you won't. Oh, Scott. Oh, fella. Oh, oh fella. You all right, Kimo Sabi? Yes, Tonto. My trick worked. Steady, big fella. Easy. We'll leave that yellow killer there for the moment. Now let's go. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. We'll separate, then approach the shack from two sides, Tonto. And ride in shooting. Ah, me go this way. Get him up, Scout. Come on, Silver. Hello. Hello, him have it. Are you up? Are you up? Oh, Silver, steady. He's a big fella. One move out of you, and you'll get what you deserve. Hello, keep this crook covered while I go inside. Get out of my way. Who, who are you? What's happening? I came to find you, Dr. Jenkins. They, they kept me tied up here. Yes, and you're lucky to be alive. They would have had to kill you later. Here, I'll untie you. They, they made me write a note. My housekeeper and that, that man Carver... Their cousins. Yes, I know. There. You'll be all right now. We're going back to town as quickly as we can after we tie up Carver's two men and leave them here for the sheriff. Early that afternoon, Judge Carter again set up his court in the general store. Now we'll get right to the point in this case and get it settled once and for all. Judge... If you'll give me a little more time, I'm sure when Doc Jenkins returns, he'll be able Miss to... Miss Connors tell... tells me the doctor may not return for some time, Judge. Now, I again offer the note signed by Dr. Jenkins as evidence that my client, Miss Connors, is the legal heir to the gold mine. Now, look here, folks. You can't keep quiet. You'll have to get out. I still object to having this case decided just on the strength of that note, Judge. The decision is too serious for that. There's no reason why the case can't be held over till Doc Jenkins comes back to town to testify in person. Your Honor, I've already stated that the doctor won't be available for some time. Now, on behalf of my client, I feel that the decision should be made here and now. As you said it will at the last court session. I overrule your objection, Tom Willis. Like Carver says, the court, meaning me, stated at the last meeting that the note would be accepted as evidence today if Doc Jenkins didn't show up. Now, we know for certain that's the doc's handwriting. So there's no reason to delay deciding who gets the legacy. All right. In that case, 
In that case, Judge, I'll give you the note so you can enter it as evidence. Settle the case right now. I'd like to know, Slick Carver, how you can be so sure that Doc Jenkins won't be back soon. Maybe even today sometime. I know because I took the word of Miss Connors. She works for the doctor. She ought to know when he might be expected to return to town. Well, I'm not saying Miss Connors' word isn't good. But in a law court, it takes more than... Oh, oh, wait a minute. I'm... I've had enough of listening to you two spouting at each other. I'm the judge here. I don't aim to make a debating society out of this courtroom. But, Your Honor, maybe Doc Jenkins is back in town right now. Why, maybe he's... If he isn't here in this courtroom right now, I say get on with the case. (laughs) Is Dr. Jenkins in the courtroom? Uh, You know darn well he ain't, Judge. Why ask foolish questions? I'm going about this legal. That's what. Now, since Dr. Jenkins isn't in the courtroom to give testimony... I hereby allow that the note he wrote is good enough evidence to show that... Hold everything, Judge. Hey, well, what do you know? Here's the doc now. We got that note you wrote, but Tom Willis won't be satisfied. That note doesn't mean a thing. Carver and his crooked friends forced me to write it. Zeke Peters died last. And the mine goes to Widow Brown by rights, Judge. You mean that slick Carver? He and my housekeeper are in cahoots, Judge. Why, you old child? Oh! Hey, someone shot through the open window. We can slick right in the yard. Somebody get the sheriff. We'll put Slick and his crooked friends where they belong. Meantime, I declare the Widow Brown is the legal heir to the gold mine. Ah, you can't do that, Judge. Now, talk. Looks like you had a friend or two on your side. That shot saved your life just now. Well, the one who fired that shot proved to be a real friend in need, Judge. He found me, brought me up here, and he risked his own life to do it. <laughs> Where'd you find a friend like that, Doc? The man I'm talking about is everybody's friend. Excepting, of course, anyone who fights the law. You see... He's known as the Lone Ranger. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>